Before I start, I just want to give a shout out to social media who, I'd say more often than not, steers me wrong. Not in this case. The only knowledge I had of Invincible, the animated TV series before watching, was that it looked like shit. This was thanks to the awful trailer that Amazon Prime had going on. I remember seeing just little snippets and a preview and, and wondering like, who is this for? I was way off. I guess the easiest way for me to describe Invincible to people that have never heard of it or had no interest like myself is, it's like Avatar The Last Airbender and The Boys had this beautiful baby together and it came out just perfect. It has the fun, playful, charming characters from Avatar The Last Airbender along with some of the pretty animation, along with the gritty, bloody, violent execution you see in The Boys, which I believe is another Amazon exclusive. So they're doing okay. They're getting a couple good ones, both kind of edgy superhero shows, but still, it's something. If that description alone isn't doing anything for you, how about the star-studded cast, which blew me away. I was surprised. This is movie-level stuff. You have Steven Yen as Invincible himself, Mark Grayson. You got Sandra Oh playing his mother. You got J.K. Simmons playing the dad. You got Gillian Jacobs from Community in this. You got Zazie Beetz from Deadpool in this. Clancy Brown, freaking Mark Hamill, John Hamm, Seth Rogen. Hell, speaking of Avatar, you got Mae Whitman in this, Katara doing a voice. There's even more actors in this than I listed, but that's pretty staggering already. What we have to work with is eight glorious episodes, with the first one being kind of a chore to get through until the whole thing flips the script in the last 10 minutes. Two things happened when I was watching. One, I'm sitting there thinking, why? Why is this getting so much praise on Twitter and other social media sites when this is just kind of a generic superhero lame story that I've seen countless times? And two, why the hell is it rated like TVMA or TV14 or whatever? Like it definitely had a mature rating on it. And there was really nothing in that first 35 minutes or so that, that screamed, you know, you need to be 14 or older to watch. And then that ending happened and then everything changed. If you've seen the aforementioned boys, this isn't gonna be like super shocking or anything, but if you haven't, holy shit, you're in for a wild treat. Even so, I just wasn't expecting the sheer violence and bloodiness that came at that, uh, like the end credits. I think the credits start to come up and then all of it happens, which is even more bonkers. Now I'm very ignorant when it comes to this. I know it's based off a comic book. I assume that maybe came out prior to The Boys, which also might be based off of a comic book. I know nothing about the media that it's playing off of. Uh, all I know is there's definitely a lot of similarities between these two. Uh, for starters, you have Omni-Man, who's basically Superman going evil, uh, and what that would look like, what that would entail. You have the fact that a lot of these characters are knockoff DC superheroes. You have a Flash counterpart. You have a Batman's, you know, counterpart. You have Wonder Woman. I, basically, all the major players have their alternatives here. I mean, even Aquaman gets a super, like, jokey nod by having a, an actual fish dude playing the character. What makes this show so compelling to me, though, is it speaks to a lot of adolescent youth out there. And I used to be an adolescent youth. I could, I could relate to it. So you have Mark, who's just turning 16 or 17, and he's discovering he has abilities. He's got superpowers like his old man. How he starts to develop them over the course of the season is fun to watch. He is an overpowered character, but he's not good at what he does. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't know how to master his abilities, which is where more of that last airbender comes into play. This dude's all powerful. He just doesn't get it yet. You know, he's, he's causing a lot of needless destruction. He's getting his ass kicked constantly, kind of uh, akin to Into the Spider-Verse. And uh, you just know he's gonna grow into this more and I can't wait for further seasons. The other thing that's great about this show is it has a major arc and then it has minor arcs sprinkled in each episode. You have your Monster of the Week stuff with villains that come and go. Uh, again, they're very much like your Saturday morning cartoon characters, but they're swearing and they're, you know, they're like shoving stakes through people's bodies and shit. And it's really gruesome stuff. And I, I eat it up. I love it. And what's more brilliant is Omni-Man is so damn likable for much of this season. You know, you, you really like the guy. He, he's a beacon of hope. Sure, he's doing some sketchy things here and there, but you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs or entire species. 
in his case. In these eight episodes, they also play with the genre a bit. You go from kind of like sci-fi horror at times to more on-campus hijinks here and there. The action scenes are amazing. They're frantic. They're animated really well. It, it, I don't think it's like Avatar quality, you know, in the later seasons, but if this budget keeps growing, I think they can easily get there and even surpass it. This was such a massive treat for me, such a surprise going in. I think I put it on at like 11 at night and I just kind of, you know, zombie watched it for most of it, just thinking, just judging it, you know, just sitting there like, can't believe I'm wasting my time with this. So then out of nowhere, I was like, oh, oh. And then it was just a roller coaster ride from there. And I couldn't get off. I didn't want to get off. I didn't want to dive into a whole bunch of spoilery stuff, talking about each episode individually and breaking it down or anything. I just wanted to share my praise, do kind of a public service announcement and, and go out and watch this thing if you haven't. It's on Amazon. I think that's the only place you can find it. But yeah, do yourself a favor like I did and give it a shot. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you were on the fence. Thanks for watching the episode. Hope you had a good time. Now, typically, I, I talk about movies. I mean, the channel's called Adam Does Movies. But on occasion, I'll throw in some TV shows to spice things up. I also think it's a perfectly fair time to let you know I post content every single week. So if you want to subscribe, you know, maybe go ahead and hit that subscription button now. And if you really want to go for broke, I am on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You could pledge up to $10 or $20 like some of these guys have and get a special shout out once in a while. So a special thank you to Mandisk, Jordan Lambis, Dallin Curtis, John Ruse, and David Mange. And also, thank you for your time. <laughs>